This is the third part of our SIM Challenge IFR flight from Yakima, Washington to Astoria, Oregon. Click the link in the video or in the description for earlier parts where we went through flight planning and getting our clearance. Has anyone been trying this flight out for themselves in the SIM? Let us know in the comments how it's going. This video will highlight flying the departure procedure and the en route segment of the flight. We left off at the hold short for runway 27. We've completed our pre-takeoff checklists and have switched over to tower frequency with departure on standby on COM1. We're assigned the Gromo 4 departure, a SID involving a DME arc to take us on our outbound course to hitch. We have the plate pulled up on foreflight. We're using the Jeppesen plate because it's drawn to scale so we can overlay our aircraft position on it. The FAA plates don't allow for this, but are still fine for using for navigating the procedure. Our initial action on the SID is to maintain the runway centerline until 400 feet above the departure end of the runway, which is set in the GPS as 1499 MSL, and then make a left turn to intercept the 250 radial outbound towards Gromo at 9 DME. We also have the VOR we're using for the procedure at Yakima tuned to NAV2 as a backup. We're all set for departure, so we'll call up tower. Yakima Tower, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, shorter runway 27, ready for IFR departure. November 8 Foxtrot Tango, Yakima Tower, the wind's 270 at 5, runway 27, clear for takeoff. Runway 27, clear for takeoff, 8 Foxtrot Tango. So we'll begin our takeoff roll. We're looking to climb out at VY, around 75 knots. Initially, we're maintaining the runway centerline. At 400 feet above the departure end, we start a left turn. The GPS counts us down to this turn, but be careful that your particular unit knows exactly when you're at the proper altitude. Many units aren't designed for this, and instead will hold the procedure until you're at the turning altitude, at which point you should unsuspend the procedure. Make sure you and the GPS are staying on the same page. Right now, we're tracking the CDI on NAV1, which is pegged to the GPS now bringing us to Gromo along the 250 radial. And we're also looking at the raw data VOR on our NAV2, also tuned to the 250 radial off Yakima. As we continue the climb out, we'll get our handoff to contact departure. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, contact departure. Contact departure, 8, Foxtrot Tango. We had our departure frequency assigned in our IFR clearance, and we'll switch over to that now in our COM1. Chinook departure, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, 2300 climbing 8000. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, Chinook Departure, Squawk 2411, and Ident. November 8 Foxtrot Tango, Radar Contact, 5 miles west of Yakima, Yakima Altimeter 3010. Roger, 518 Foxtrot Tango. So we continue our climb, tracking outbound along the radial towards Gromo. Our climb rate so far is well above what we calculated would be required to meet the minimum climb gradient of the departure procedure. As we approach 9 DME, we're near our turn. It'll be a left turn to 166 degrees to join the arc. The GPS counts us down to it. As we fly by Gromo, the GPS sequences to the next leg, Gromo to Ogzob, along the DME arc. We'll rely primarily on the GPS to fly the arc. It'll update our desired track, DTK, in the top left ever so slightly to keep us in a turn with a 9 mile radius from the VOR. We should also monitor the DME and the needle on our VOR2 receiver. We're not going to be doing a full turn 10, twist 10 technique like we traditionally would, but we'll set our OBS on 206. The outbound radial will be picking up toward our transition at hitch. This way, we're keeping up our situational awareness. We'll keep flying the arc, maintaining the climb, making slight left turns periodically just to keep the needle on the GPS centered. It looks like we'll reach Ogzob, which marks the 206 radial, and turning point for the outbound course just as we come up on our cruise altitude of 8,000 feet. The GPS counts us down to the turn, which we'll make as we begin planning our level off from our climb. Flying by Ogzob, the GPS sequences to the next leg to hitch. We'll be transitioning off the departure and joining the Victor Airway in our flight plan here. Our en route course is 212 degrees, so we peg that. Around this time, we're departing the departure control airspace, so we get our next handoff. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, contact Seattle Center on 132.6. 132.6, Cessna 8, Foxtrot Tango. Seattle Center, Cessna 518, Foxtrot Tango, 8000. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, Seattle Center, altimeter 3010. So we're handed off to Seattle Center and we're well on our way. Just as we saw in our planning, we're cruising between cloud layers with the thicker and ice-filled clouds safely above us. Our Victor Airway, though it is a detour south of our direct route, will help us avoid some high terrain off to the right, as well as what looks like Mount Hood further out on the left. 
At a dojo, we make a right turn to remain on Victor 468. If we look at our route, we can see that a straight line between our present position and our destination at Astoria would be a pretty nice shortcut. We've passed some of the high terrain which would be in the way, so we might ask ATC for a direct routing at this time. Center 518 Foster Tango, are you able to give us a direct to Astoria at this time? Remember, A Foster Tango, I'll pass that request on to the next controller. A Foster Tango, roger. Air traffic controllers are only able to provide off route assignments within airspace that they control. Seattle Center's area does encompass our entire route of flight, but there are pockets of airspace within this that are assigned to TRACON facilities approach control. We saw this departing Yakima where we were initially talking to Chinook departure before getting handed off to center. We'll be flying just a bit north of Portland International, which is a Charlie airport. They have a TRACON facility handling low altitude flights like ours near them, so they'll be responsible for making sure that any off-route assignment keeps us free of terrain and obstructions. For this reason, Center has deferred our request to go direct to Astoria to Portland Approach. We'll be handed off to them soon. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, contact Portland Approach on 124.35. 124.35, Cessna 8, Foxtrot Tango. With that in the box, we'll call out Portland. Portland Approach, Cessna 518, Foxtrot Tango, 8000. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, Portland Approach, turn right, direct Astoria, Portland Altimeter 3010. Right, direct Astoria, 8, Foxtrot Tango. So we'll tap FPL on the GPS, push the cursor on the right knob, and use the outer knob to scroll to our destination airport, Astoria. We'll hit the direct button, then enter, and then enter again. Hitting FPL puts us back on the nav screen, and we have a new desired track of 268, which we can turn to now. We'll also want to tap Astoria on ForeFlight and tap direct so that now that too is navigating direct to the destination. We have roughly 80 miles to go in our flight. We'll stay with Portland Approach until we leave their airspace, which isn't defined on our charts. No Tracon airspace is depicted like that, but at some point northwest of Portland, we'll get our handoff. This will get us back to Seattle Center, albeit on a different frequency since we've moved into a more western sector of center airspace. Before that happens, we'll want to start thinking about our arrival and approach into Astoria, and this is where we'll leave off for this video. Check out our next and final video in this segment, the approach phase and landing at Astoria. Join us for that video, let us know how your flights are going, and any possible routes you'd like to see in a future series, and check out all our ground schools and more at flight-insight.com.